Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. Welcome to Project Me with Tiffany Carter, the podcast and posse. I'm your host, Tiffany, and we are going to get right into it today because I am feeling fiery as hell, even though I didn't sleep that well. So be prepared. A Tiff style mood is coming. (laughs) We are talking about how I broke the toxic cycle of putting everyone else before myself. A people pleasing expose, as I'm calling it. This is what has caused me to have the most dissatisfaction, unfulfillment, feel is that a word? Whatever it is now. Feeling lost, confused, depressed, truly. And you know, this part, this part is, you know, sensitive information, but it's facts. You know, this is what led me to plan my death seven years ago, seven and a half years ago. I, when I really boil it all down to what got me to that low of a state where every day was Groundhog's Day, I felt like a robot. I was a shell of myself. It took me a lot. Like, it's not like you would never see me laugh. I didn't look like a typical depressed person or someone who was just felt so blah in life. And I know there's many of you listening who are feeling that way. We go through the motions. And on the outside, yeah, I mean, well, first of all, my face was frozen. I mean, that was that's been happening since I was 25. So that helps. But I, I would show up, I paid my bills, I did the thing. It wasn't like I was lounging in bed all day. And looked like someone who was a miserable mess. In fact, I looked totally fine because I had learned I needed to. And it's here's the thing that happens when you look fine. When you look like you're fine and you have it together and you're someone who's a survivor who's been through a lot of shit. And those of you who know my story know that I've been through a lot. And it's not a comparison. You've been through a lot, too. It just looks different, right? I have clients. I have a client who, uh, the anniversary of her daughter's um, murder just happened. Wow. I wasn't expecting those tears. Um, Where her daughter, her, her daughter was murdered. I mean, I have clients who have been with severely sociopathic husbands and had to leave and ended up with nothing. I've heard so many stories and my story by itself, right, is a lifetime movie. Some of you have had childhoods filled with alcoholism or it was just void of emotion or there was so much fear around money or anything. There was so, there was too much discipline. We all have such a mixed bag. And what happens when we're survivors like that, either one, you go down the path of addiction, you're a disaster, you are a complete mess, and it's very obvious from the outside. I call them the walking wounded, and I have a lot of compassion. I see a lot of people come to the beach if you haven't noticed to heal. Gee, interesting how I'm here. I have nothing to heal from. (laughs) And you watch all walks of life. I watch people with extreme eating disorders where I'm like, I don't even know how the wind isn't blowing them over. I see people praying so hard in the morning in the sand before the surfers come. It's really, it's beautifully humbling to watch. And 
those people are kind of obvious, right? Their scars are being worn on the outside. Their head is being hung low. But not everyone looks like that. A lot of us, right, especially those of you who have kids or myself where I had no one to turn to for money. If I wanted to make sure that I had a roof over my head, I was fed, I could pay for um, outpatient therapy, et cetera, et cetera, and my Botox habit, because we know that's priorities. I had to make my own money. There was no fallback plan. I wasn't going to be living in like, there was no mom's basement to live in. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't look like the walking wounded, but on the inside, I was. And I know because like attracts like, you hear me say that all the time. Many of you are the walking wounded. You, you even speak well, you have a solid job, you're coaching people, a lot of you feel like frauds coaching people, because who am I to coach people, or I want to coach people, I know I can help people, but who am I, because I'm still a hot mess, well, newsflash, we're all a hot mess, all of us, and, and the second someone doesn't think that they have a mess, and they're messy, and they have things to regularly work on, you want to run from those people. That's that's not good. That's either denial or some level of narcissism. Not that I'm a doctor in diagnosing people. So when we come across like even stoic, I've got it together, confident, um, even though it's not true, we're paying our bills, we're showing up for work, we might even be a star employee. You know, you looked at me Seven and a half years ago, when I had all those pills lined up on my counter, my my gel manicure was fresh. My brows were freshly threaded. My hair was freshly highlighted. My Botox was not worn off. I mean, I had at that time, I think I had about two million in the bank, had a luxury BMW, a luxury townhouse in Los Angeles. I could get on a first class flight anywhere I wanted at any time. I already had my own business. It wasn't my my dream, my heart, my passion, like Project Me with Tiffany Carter is, but a very respectable business that's intellectually stimulating that I'm grateful for that I still have to this day that many people would you know, do anything to have that coming in. And it didn't matter. And what happens is no one asks. No one asks how we're doing. And I know you're feeling this right now. You might be the person who cracks jokes or smiles, or you always are cooking every night for the family. You go to all your kids games you make sure you look put together. You go to church every week, but you are you are suffering a slow death inside and you're not OK and you're not happy. And no one asks us how we're doing because we are not the walking wounded, but we are. We're probably even more wounded. But it's not obvious. Meanwhile, if you had um, a broken leg or it was very obvious you were sick you lost all your hair. You had a cane. People would stand up, get out of your way, offer you their seat. They would even bring um, casseroles over. <laughs> you know what? Why is, someone needs to bring my ass a casserole. Should I shout this <laughs> out on the deck here? Someone needs to bring my ass. Not like I don't want a calorie laden casserole, though. Like I'm not a, I don't like a heavy cream like that doesn't do it for me. I want like a healthy, fibrous. White meat chicken casserole. What in the hell? I want a goddamn casserole, people. It's funny when I had it's funny, but not funny when I had my breast um, explant surgery, right? That was obvious. I had drains in. You could tell, you know, obviously I was struggling. It was visible. I had bandages. I was high as hell on anti-nausea and pain medicine. And really, the people close to you, of course, will step up. Strangers will step up. But the real people in your life 
whether they're your mentors, your coaches, your friends, your family, your partner, the real people in your life, the solid people that come in clutch, those people see you when you're not physically ill, when you haven't had surgery, when you're not crying, when you're not having a full temper tantrum. They're there for you during those times. Because a lot of people will be there for you in the other times. You know what I'm saying? So how I broke this toxic cycle is number one, my life depended on it. If there wasn't that God intervention seven and a half years ago, I would not be here today talking to you guys. I didn't want to be here anymore. It was too hard and I didn't see a way out. But it started with me surrendering. In a way, the act of me laying out those pills on that bar top was in a, it sounds weird, but it was my way of surrendering going, I get it, God, like I'm not supposed to be here. It's, I, I'm, I'm waving the white flag. It's a very dramatic way to surrender. And I really didn't want to go. I just thought I had no choice. There's a big difference. It wasn't a cry for help. There was no note. No one would have known. Everyone would have been shocked, blown away. And God intervened. I've shared that story on earlier podcasts, but God intervened because God knew it wasn't my time. And I didn't want it to be my time, but I didn't know the way out. But I started with surrendering. True humility, humble surrendering. I cannot do this anymore. You need to say it to the universe, to your angels, whatever you believe in, but it's got to be something bigger than yourself. I don't care if it's the aliens. It's got to be something bigger than yourself. And I was in so much pain. I was willing to do whatever it took. Whatever it took. And what that took was me putting myself first before other people and really trusting in mentors, in coaches that that didn't make me a selfish, unloving, uncaring friend or person or daughter or um, boss or business owner. No, that was that was self-honoring. And in fact, it made me a better friend, a better boss, a better business owner, a better client. It made me better all around because when we keep putting everyone else in front of ourselves, even those who I watch you guys do it with your kids, when you do it to the point where you're so depleted, you've got nothing left to give, you get resentful, you get crabby, you get snappy, and then that's what your kids see. That's what the people around you see. I highly doubt you want to teach your kids to deplete yourself and sacrifice yourself to the point where you have nothing left, like in that book, The Giving Tree, where you end up like the stump. Why in the hell was that the main book for any anyone who's like 35 plus? That was one of the, in the main childhood books. And I love Shel Silverstein. But if that is not the book of codependence, what's more wild, those of you who know the story of my mom, she sent me her personal autographed version of the book, I think for my 30th birthday. And it wasn't lost on me. That book, literally, that giving tree gave to the boy to the point where all that was left was the damn stump of the tree, like three inches of the stump. And then the boy came and was pissed off about that there was nothing left from the tree and came and sat on the stump. Hell no. I would rather you continue to nurture and grow and flourish and support yourself if you see yourself as a tree, let's say an apple tree, right? Keep nurturing that. Then the tree grows bigger. You grow more fruit. Then there's more to share with people. Then your trunk becomes strong and resilient when there's storms, and there's things that happen. And if you part of your branches get sick, half of you could get chopped down and you'll regenerate because you have so much nourishment and you're so strong and you and you last 10 times as long. You can last for hundreds of years instead of continuing to give little pieces, little slices 
one apple at a time, one branch of your time of yourself away, let me tell you, there'll be nothing left. And some of you have nothing left now. And I know some of you say this. I have nothing left to give. No, you need to take that back. You think this is the right thing to do. You've been taught that. You've been taught that maybe by people who um, benefited from that, from you always overgiving. It's not true. It's bullshit. So I want you to take that back. Claim it for yourself. Say, I'm not doing this. I'm putting myself first. This is the self-honoring thing to do, but this is for the greatest good of all. It is not for the greatest good of all for me to deplete myself and slowly kill myself. Who does that benefit? Nobody. I want you to ask yourself these questions, right? Like, (laughs) what do you want the story of you to be to your grandkids? Do you want it to be, God, it's so sad she or he died so young because they worked themselves to death and they were so giving and they gave to everyone else. No. Wouldn't you rather be there for them? Wouldn't you rather be there for them to see? We're already two months into 2022. If you haven't noticed, the older you get, the faster time goes by. Do you want to keep letting your life pass you by, settling settling for this crap or take the damn risk and go for it and do something different. You can get your life back, but it's only you who can do it. I've never regretted leaving that old Tiffany behind, that old story behind, even though it was uncomfortable learning a new way. I never regretted it because now I'm living instead of merely surviving. And that's what I want for you. I want you to be living not in a survival-based life. My March applications are now open for my exclusive two-month private business coaching program. I only take a maximum of six people at a time, so these fill up really quickly. You can swipe up the applications in my show notes or it's on Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany. You know you want to go for it. You've been spinning your wheels. You've been toe dipping. You've been half going in the water, but not fully going in. You need that accountability, but you also need to know where to even start. What am I supposed to focus on? What am I supposed to do? I need someone to help me keep my head in the game. And you're willing to pay for it and be uncomfortable and do scary things. And have the support from someone who's been there, who knows what the hell I'm doing, both strategically and mindset-wise, who gets it. I'm your person. Don't apply to see just to see if you get in or to try to get some free coaching. You know, that's I'm not about that life. And I want you to be scared when you apply. I want you to be nervously scared, but I also want in your gut to have a knowing like this is who I'm supposed to work with because when the student is ready, you get you get the messages. Often you get repeat messages and the right teacher always appears. Wishing you guys great health, wealth, and worth as always. Love you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.